This is a show about jewelry, why we wear it, why it matters, how it's made, and what it means. I'm Alex D, and I turn cannabis into gold. I make mind-blowing jewelry in gold, silver, and platinum from cannabis plants here in Canada for stage, screen, for people who want to rock crazy jewelry. I'm the Cannabis Goldsmith. That's what I need, a second sound curtain. If I'm going to be recording these podcasts during rush hour, before dawn, or at dawn now that the clocks have gone back, I might as well make this studio more permanent. So that's what I'm going to do for the next few weeks. But anyway, here we are. The Cannabis Goldsmith. Wow. This show is about DJs. It's about turntables. It's about vinyl records. It's a love that I have. I used to be a DJ when I was a young man. I basically couch surfed so I could buy records and play in after hours clubs, in nightclubs. I even held down a residency in my city in the top nightclub in the town for a couple of years. The peak years of the early 80s. I mean, that's a long time ago, I know. But this was when music was fantastic, when you could, like, a, a lot of the, the, the records you're hearing now are sampled from that period. So this was an amazing, amazing period in, to be a DJ. I'm so grateful that I experienced it. But more more important than that is I witnessed the the birth of the Technics 1200 turntable, which is really at the root of all things DJ in the world. It's it's how DJing really took off and how hip hop took off too. These are the the turntables, the the products at the root of hip hop culture. They began it. They they are the technology that innovative DJs used to create hip hop. And they're the tools that innovative nightclub DJs used to create moments on the dance floor that people still remember, you know, 50 years later. I mean, their, their experiences, these turntables that people used to create on these turntables that lit up the acid house scene and rave culture. You know, this is pre-digital stuff I'm talking about. And these turntables are still made they're they're they've been made and the design essentially hasn't changed i mean they look the same they they maybe added a button here or took a button away or whatever but the main ingredients are there on these turntables and these technics 1200s and the main ingredients are a thick rubber base to to uh, suppress vibration because you're generally, the people who use these are generally playing in situations that are very loud. And there's lots of bass bins and shit shaking shit up or people jumping up and down on the dance floor. I've been in, I've been in derelict buildings with like 300 people jumping up and down at the same time on a second story floor. And the whole floor was, was, was like a rubber band going up and down. And any second it could break and fall through. And I've been in places like that uh, where you're just on the verge. It's a kind of a, a feeling you get where you're at the very top of the roller coaster about to go down. It's that kind of feeling. But you, you don't want to leave because the DJ is so fucking good, right? But anyway, so the rubber base on these turntables, what they do is they, they, they knock back a lot of the vibration, which could suck when you're trying to get a nice clear signal out of the stylus on the record on the vinyl record you, you don't want you don't want it giving back people jumping up and down on the dance floor so anyway it was never enough the the rubber a lot of times so DJs came up with innovative ways to to s- suspend the turntables in the air while they were playing some of it was just ridiculous i remember playing on records on turntables that were sp- on boards hung by ropes from the ceiling or chains where you'd be trying to like 
the things would be swinging around above the mixer like in like 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 a, a country a bench you might see like one of these swing sets you, you're trying to uh, just absolutely impossible to play records but you do it anyway and at least there wouldn't be any vibration but you know there'd be like people who would who would get tennis balls and put a whole bunch of tennis balls on the on the counter and then put a slab of concrete a patio slab and then put the turntable on top of that that worked a lot of times or you styrof different kinds of styrofoam or rubber i mean i remember playing in a club in africa once where they used rubber inner tubes um car or truck inner tubes that were sliced up and woven into this kind of fabric that the uh, that the turntables sat on uh, that worked that was actually kind of innovative and I mean, it smelled like rubber though when you play it but these turntables are the foundation of everything and they're, they're the main ingredients with them as i said is the rubber base the uh this the pitch control now this is key you know you can speed up or slow down records i mean you could do it before but this there was only a speed selection it would be like 45 or 33 or super old school 78 right but but there was no way to 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 change those speeds unless you did it with your finger and a lot of djs became proficient at doing that with their fingers where they could override or turn the turn the motor off the turntable and spin up records with the fingers. It just just a this is too too much grief. So the Technics crew in Japan, they they came up with this this slider right like a fader a pitch fader so you could go up so many percent or down so many percent and this allowed DJs to to um, uh, you know, match beats on two different turntables and blend them together. And and you ended up getting DJs that were, were very good at doing this and, and masters at beat mixing and others not so good. Like me, I, I was okay, but wasn't a prodigy at it. But then when you'd hear somebody who was, you'd know immediately how good they were as a DJ because they could do this, you know, uh, quickly and easily. But some of us, like me, had to learn, you know, in the in the in the grind in the middle of the night until we got it perfect and practice and I used to go into, into the club in the afternoon when nobody was there except the bartender setting up for the night or whatever uh, setting up for the weekend and uh, and practice and practice sets and stuff on the system just to just to become good and comfortable with it well you know for when Saturday night rolled around and it, I think that that was the the idea of these turntables is the pitch control, the the um, the bass, su uh, the the vibration suppression. And there was something else: as you could turn the motor off, you could turn the motor on, you could spin the platter with your hand backwards, forwards. You could put a mat on the turntable and the record on top of that, and then lift the record off it would it would allow the platter to spin below the record and you could re release your finger and drop it and it would it would catch and start up at speed again and th this was a way to to speed up and slow down vinyl in a way that that you could use it as an instrument basically and some DJs became really proficient at that cutting and pasting with little bits of of vinyl from one into the other and it's quite magic and you can a good a good person doing this can create entire new songs from existing songs just with turntables and a mixer by going back and forth and and uh, those of you who don't know what that sounds like I mean you should check it out it's amazing um, they transform the records from what they were into something new using these turntables this pitch control the ability to change, uh, to start and stop quickly, uh, the vinyl quickly, and cut and paste it into other pieces of vinyl. Now, the other thing about these turntables is that they started quickly. So even if you weren't doing any of that fancy stuff, you could queue up a record. This would be good in like a radio station, right, where you're 
where you have uh, content playing and you, you're talking in between the content and you could queue up a record. And to do that on these, these 1200s, you just you, you start it up where the sound starts and uh, you listen on your headphones, you cue it, and then you back cue it a quarter of a turn. Like this turn, these turntables start to full speed in a quarter of a turn. So you could back cue your record a quarter of a turn, turn off the platter, and then when it came to start it, you just hit the start button on the turntable and it would start exactly, the track would start exactly where you wanted it, when you wanted it to start. So if you could be talking like me, you hit the button now, the music would start. Scooby -dop -bop -bop -da 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 -da. So that's how it worked in a radio station environment. But these turntables, okay, no, they haven't changed. They, they've, tr I guess they've, they've tried to make little changes in them over time, but essentially they've remained the same. The ones that I have in the studio are the original 1200s, but they're the black version, so they were not the silver, super original ones. But they're the black for when they when they brought out the first black ones. Now I've had these for, for um, a long time, decades, right? And uh, they've been cleaned once, but you know they could go in for a good cleaning. I might send them to my friend Ryan who cleans twelve hundreds. I mean, there's a whole industry around cleaning and refitting them, putting putting bigger cables, output cables on the back. There's like polishing. He does a good job of it. So I think I'll talk to him about it and see if he can buff up my uh, my turntables. But they still work great. And uh, and so these are the these are the these are the the turntables that every DJ in the world worth anything has a set of at home. And there are a lot of clubs in the world that still that still have them. Um, it's not all gone digital. I mean, when any really amazing DJs come out out of out to play, this you know vinyl is always is always there. Like somebody like a Mark Farina or a Danny Tanaglia, or the Masters at Work guys, or Roger Sanchez. All these these are DJs who grew up on vinyl and play vinyl. Who can play it today? You know, if they want to and they play it well but djs use these turntables they have them at home and i mean there are djs who have retired and there are djs who've made piles of money uh, who who don't play out anymore who are maybe producers of of dj music music that djs use now who have these turntables at home like me like i'm not the rich but i have them at home and then people have them in their basement maybe they work in banking now and they go downstairs to Oh, what was that? That um, the DJ from the stock bro DJ guy. Anyway, that'll come to me. The guy that had to give up his DJ career in order to to be a billionaire. Well, anyway, he has these turntables at home. I know. And then there are other there are other people who have them. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous, but they're they're all over the world. And I'm thinking, okay, this is my favorite product. I think of all time. Now I I'm. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of the 1200. Also, I got to add here, Technics has nothing to do with this whatsoever. I, this is just an a, a homage, an ode to this wonderful product that I use every single day, even in the studio. I, when I go into the studio to design or photograph shit or whatever, I, I turn on the system. I pay, pick out a piece of vinyl and I put it out of 1200 and I play it. Now there's a lack of convenience to this. I mean, the record ends. And the thing about the 1200, it doesn't have an auto lift feature at the end where the arm comes off automatically and goes back into the, into the thing, the little ca arm caddy thing. No, you have to manually take the needle off the record and put it back because otherwise it'll sit there all day grinding down your record and your stylus. So you have to have some measure of awareness of what's going on. I think that's important too with these turntables. But anyway, I love them. And I know you do too. If you're listening to this podcast about the, the Technics 1200 and about DJing, vinyl and all that shit, you know how important these things are, right? So anyway, 
I was sitting out in the backyard and smoking a huge joint, and I was sitting out under the trees in the sun, and I was thinking about these turntables, and I think I want to make something for these turntables. I want. I started making jewelry from the turntables. I started modeling the strobe ring. I make a, a, a men's ring with the strobe ring on the face of it in sterling silver, a big fucking men's ring. It's huge. And it's for DJs. It's like a DJ ring. Uh, it, it, it takes the strobe ring and puts it on your hand. And when you're playing, when you're playing vinyl, this looks very good in a phonograph, I think. Anyway, but I love the ring too, because it's, it's, it means something to me. So, um, so I designed this ring with, um, with the strobe ring the strobe dot pattern on the surface. And I also make a shoe bar, a, a thing, a piece of shoe jewelry that you lace into your sneakers. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, sitting, sitting in the backyard, you know, smoking a spliff and, and looking up at the trees and squirrels and the rabbits and shit. And I was thinking, you know what? I got to do more. I got I to gotta do more. So I started thinking about the turntable even deep, more deeply. And I was like, oh, okay. What can I do? I can make jewelry for turntable. That's what I'm going to do. So the secret project that I was working on is a turntable weight. It's a uh, it's a weight that fits on top of the vinyl that fits on that that you put on your turntable. It goes on the spindle, but it's made in sterling silver. The sterling silver has a density that is it's really dense. It's heavy. I mean, it's not as it's not as dense as gold or platinum. But it's still, it has, it has a, a weight, a heft to it that aluminum doesn't have. And something in aluminum would have to be massive, to to like like to the equivalent in in silver is is going to be a lot smaller in in size to a weight in aluminum. You get this this the advantage of of dense, the density, the mass of the sterling silver. And I started thinking about this, like, okay, I'm going to make turntable weights in sterling silver. Because I know a lot of the DJs, I know, a lot of my DJ friends around the world, a lot of people I, I, I know and admire as DJs, I know they have these setups in their basement where they practice. Like, I used to go into the club and practice or just fuck around with vinyl. They have huge vinyl collections, most of them that they play and i i mean i can think of djs all around the world who would be my market for this particular high-end product now this is a a turntable weight it's not meant to travel to it's not meant for on stage or anything uh but but for the dj at home in their basement or in their in their playing rooms that they have set up to to DJ in and practice and, and just fuck around and learn about their own vinyl. This is the product for them. And I was thinking, this is something I could stay in their studio. Super high quality, personalized. Like we can we can put their branding into the side, into the top of it. It's a small object. Um, it's going to be a lot smaller than these aluminum, these mass market aluminum turntable weights that are that are that are CNC machined in China. I mean you can get boxes of them for nothing really on on Alibaba. Uh, and and you know they they put branding on the outside and it, it 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 appears that this is where the value is the added value is in the branding on the outside of a, this piece of aluminum. But I I want to do something different. I mean that's not what I I want to do. I want to put the DJ's own branding on the thing. They're going to be using it at home, right? In their or in their in their studios and their DJ setups in the studios, or or if they're like record producers that have twelve hundreds, this would be ideal in the fucking in the studio. One of these turntable weights, or a matched pair in sterling silver. I mean, branded with the DJ's own brand or the, the labels on branding on the side of it, right? So I was thinking, okay, these are, this is a different type of product. This is not a mass market product. This is this is something that a DJ can use for themselves, right? And this is not they're not they're not they're they're not marketing a brand, but they're they're having something made for themselves for their for their own use. 
Now, I was thinking so deeply about these products. I was thinking, okay, so how can I make them? Because as a jeweler, I want to use jewelry techniques and, and manufacturing quality, and I want to bring it to these objects. So this is not a mass-produced thing. Each one of these is individually handmade for the specific DJ's use or for the specific record producer or audiophile. Audiophiles have these turntables at home too. So for an audiophile, I mean, like this would be a product for them. They have a, you know, a $15,000 turntable. Uh, why are they using an aluminum, uh, Chinese made aluminum freaking turntable weight? No, no, no. This is a, a piece of jewelry for the turntable. And I was starting to think, yeah, yeah, let's do this. So I designed one last year. Uh, design one of these weights and started experimenting with the design and modifying it and changing it and seeing what the, the ideal weights were. Uh, I figured that out. With this process of using a jewelry techniques to manufacture these, what happens is that you you can put extreme amounts of detail into the into the product and and you, you know they're each they're they're made like a, a ring like an engagement ring or like a giant like you know like a bracelet you know, i'm using the same techniques to make these we're casting precious metals into ingots in the shape of turntable weights and these are that's why we're calling them turntable ingots they're they're something that you can keep on your on your turntable and then use quickly when you need to so that's what I wanted in the design. We've we've accomplished that in the in the design. The, <laughs> then came the problem of finding how to, to how to make these freaking things because everything has limitations, right? Like for any amount of money, you could make anything, but you we wouldn't be able to sell it because it would be way too expensive. So. You know, it, it's not only the cost of the precious metal here, you know, if you're using a lot of precious metals, you know, several hundred grams of, of silver or whatever, that's a cost. But the the actually the making it is a huge cost because they're individually made, right? This is not mass production. They each have to be cast one at a time and then finished and then adjusted for weight or whatever the weight to whatever weight the DJ wants, right? So I was thinking, how are we going to do this? This is going to be, that's where a lot of the cost in this is going to be. But we figured it out, but I couldn't find any anybody to cast it. Our, our master goldsmith in Toronto, um, this, this is just, the weight is just a little bit too much for his centrifuge to, to, um, to, to reliably produce. So... I started looking at different ways. Are we going to lathe them out of a giant block of silver? But I don't like lathe. lathe the stuff you get, um, these aluminum turntable weights that you get, are CNC lathed. And they have this machine quality look. Like if you buy a box of screws at Home Depot or whatever, they have that look, right? It's, I don't want that. This is jewelry for turntables. This is, this is I want to show my appreciation for the frickin' turntable. I don't want to put like a hubcap on top of it for fuck's sake or whatever, you know, a jar lid. I don't want to do that. I want something fucking interesting to put on the turntable. So I started thinking, ooh, designs. I could put I could put art on the sides of these things. I could put the DJ's name on the top, you know, so it personalizes it for the DJ, for the audio file, for the customer. So they're they have their own th their own piece. I'm thinking longer term, as I always do with this too. It's like, okay, imagine being bequeathed this. I, I, I mean, these are permanent things, right? These are things in sterling silver precious metals. These things last. They don't. They they last, and they're given to other people. They're given to to as bequeathed when someone dies they're passed on to someone else right this is rings or bracelets or anything but 
DJs need this as well. They need to tap into this. Imagine being the, the grandson of a DJ, a famous DJ, getting this as bequeathed to you, right? How many great records have played underneath that? How, how many hours and fucking in, in nightclubs do, with dripping water did granddad play in, uh, you know? Or like to get to the point where he could afford one of these fucking things at home to have on his, uh, have on his turntable. And this, this has acquired all his energy. And you know, the great, great, great grandson will have it years from now, right? And this will have some legacy and some history. It'll have the DJ's name ground into the actual or cast into the metal itself. And this is what, this is what I'm in visualizing with these turntable ways. Isn't that mass production? This is honor. We're honoring these frickin' turntables. We're honoring DJs, We're honoring the music, the hip hop, the house music, the acid house, the Detroit techno. We're honoring this, these things that were created with these turntables in a turntable way. And it's like, okay, I've got it. But I, I couldn't find anyone to fucking, I couldn't find anyone to, to do the one step in the process that uh, that I needed, like I needed it cast, right? And it's hard to cast. The, this shit is really heavy. And to do, I want jewelry quality too. I don't want like sand casting where 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 there's like rough edges or shit. I want I want it to be a piece of jewelry, right? It's an expensive thing, and it's going to be fabulous. So I finally found a way to do it. And um, I was getting to the point where I was going to, I was going to uh, melt a, an ingot, just a, a rough ingot in silver, and then put it in a lathe and then lathe it to shape. But as I said, I don't want this machiney look. I want it to look mm, like jewelry. I want you to be able to look at it and, and realize like, wow. And then pick it up and then feel how heavy it is. And, you know, yeah. And the design is really innovative, too, because it's going to stay on top of your turntable, even if you're not using it. It's going to be just a great piece. So I, I finally, the design's nailed down, and, uh, and I'm going to be producing the first one probably in two weeks, just, just as the first test piece in sterling i'm i'm so excited it's taken me so much work to even to get to this point you know thinking about and and designing this product now um once the first one is done and it casts casts then i know that we can make them for other people now as i said each one of these is individually designed so we design them in either wax we make a wax master model and uh, and then cast that in sterling silver, and then finish it to spec and to you know put a finish on the outside of it. it. It can be either like like have a shine or a dull shine, or it can be it can be actually we can even plate them. But I really don't want to do plating. But we could plate them in twenty four karat gold or whatever. But the 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 whole thing is a solid silver ingot that that's functional fully functional in a dj environment or in an audiophile environment or in a home studio or in a real studio environment so that's the product turntable ingots by tribe designed by me alex d here in the thousand islands area of ontario now you, you probably thought we were only making shit out of cannabis plants like we we're only making jewelry and like accessories and stuff out of out of cannabis plants cast in precious metals but we i i you know like i say you know i draw from my own life so this is what i'm drawing from here but i'm gonna throw some cannabis vibe into these you know i can imagine a dj like dj sneak who is all about cannabis might be interested in a product like this but i i would put I'm going to put live cast cannabis leaves around the outside of, I think, the first one that I'm making for for me, for the studio, the test. And we'll see how that looks. But I could put leaves. I could engrave all kinds of stuff on the outside. Oh, man. these are It's just going to be just a, just a nice, a nice piece. I'm so happy with this design idea. 
and we're getting so close now. I've made the masters in castable uh, wax or whatever. So we'll see, crossing the fingers and and we'll go from there. Christmas is coming and I've looks like I've missed it for this year, but we're, we're making products all the time here at Tribe. So if you want us to make you something special that will blow people's minds, send me an email, alexd at cannabisgoldsmith.com. But first, if write a review, even if it's a shitty one, but give us five stars anyway. The Cannabis Goldsmith is produced by Tribe Communications, Inc. in the Thousand Islands area of Ontario, Canada. You can see what we do at tribe.ca. Send us an email, alexd at cannabisgoldsmith.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week on The Cannabis Goldsmith.